could technology make mothers obsolete, the idea, being a feature of dystopian science fiction stories. But now the BBC has done a serious report on the development of babies outside of the human body using artificial wombs and how likely this could be in coming years. Is it likely? Is it a, even a, a future path for our society or is it something that uh, people are getting carried away by? And what about the ethical questions, including uh, what it means for traditional notions of family life? Joining me in the studio to speak about this, Madeline Page, a spokeswoman from the pro-life charity Right to Life UK. Madeline, thanks for coming in. Um, this is notional, hypothetical stuff. It's uh, it, Nobody's saying this will be coming on stream anytime soon in a, in a British medical facility, but it's not unthinkable over the course of coming decades, is it? No, I think it's becoming more and more of a reality, as, as the BBC have shown. But it feels like it wasn't that long ago that it was a thought experiment that, you know, you're studying at university. But um, it's definitely coming along the line quite quickly. So we'll need to, to see where it goes. From a pro-life point of view and an ethical point of view, it, it, it's quite interesting, I think. Part of me um, thinks that it could be very quite a, quite a good thing, almost, for the pro-life movement. Um, it'll enable us to sort of rehumanize the unborn. And I think a lot of people who are pro-abortion are quite uh, anxious about what this could mean um, because obviously now women um, would have the option to, if they didn't want to be pregnant, um, to put their child into an artificial womb, which will cause uh, quite interesting, I, th I think might show their true colours as to whether or not they it's related to wanting a child rather than not wanting to be pregnant. Um, but then obviously it does have other implications for, you know, the, the natural side of things and, and the, bond, the bond between mother and child. OK, you've struck a position I didn't necessarily expect you to take there, actually, which is always refreshing uh, in the news business. Ella Whelan. I think it's a very exciting prospect um, because, well, I'm on my own fertility journey and very desperate to be a mother at the moment and I'm very excited about being pregnant, but not all women feel like that. You know, you can get terrible, like really debilitating nausea and terrible complications. Even though I'm excited to be pregnant, I'm not so sure I'm excited for labour. You know, there is a, a lot of uh, misery in the, in the prospect of actually bearing a child as well as joy and any kind of medical innovations, technological innovations, indeed that could give... Um, you know, people who, you know, same sex couples or anyone who wants to um, have a child, maybe not through surrogacy, that, that option, that's a brilliant thing. Uh, from a pro abortion, staunchly pro abortion, pro choice, more accurately, um, point of view, I think that it would raise very interesting questions, but not because the um, pro choice side has ever, uh, I think, degraded the um, value that some people put on the unborn or the fetus or the baby, or however you want to describe it, but that what we do is we forefront that what a thing that is happening to and in a woman's body um, then means that the woman is put front and, front and centre of any considerations. So obviously if, that, if it then happens in a lab or a sack or whatever, this kind of newfangled thing, I'm making it sound terrible, but you know, some kind of other way, then yes, different discussions well, will have not, to happen. Her body's not involved, is it? I mean, I mean, with... well, that will be the change, but it, you know, at the moment, um, when, you, you know, when you become pregnant, it's your breast that swell, it's your belly that extends, it's your feet that get sore, it's your body that something is happening to. And I think that the... Um, um, the ethical and moral discussions about pregnancy at the moment have to centre on, first and foremost, a woman's freedom and a woman's choice. In a future in which a woman's body is not involved, then obviously fascinating and difficult questions will open up about if you have a kind of in a sort of sterile environment, two very equal positions being fought forward in terms of the, the DNA from a father and mother. That's obviously very different to what we have now, which is a mother's body bearing a child. Madeline, is, is, is the, is the process process of, of motherhood in, in some way devalued by not going through all those delightful symptoms as outlined by Ella there. Do you, does there need to be some pain for the gain of new life? No, there needs to be pain for the gain, no, but I think there's certainly something to be said for, for it being natural and I mean the NHS talk a lot about um, pre-birth, the importance of that bond, that natural bond between mother and child um, that happens while the child is in the womb. Um, I think it, it does bring a, a really interesting point, though, around, yes, it is the mother's body that's being used, but it's also another person's body, the, the unborn child's body, that we're talking about terminating or whether or not they're allowed to live. And I think that's what will become interesting if, if artificial wombs do come into practice, then then we'll be able to see, well, are we really concerned about the fact that someone's going to have to carry this child and go through 
all these symptoms that have just been listed? Or is it actually the child isn't wanted and the person is trying to look for other reasons to, to terminate that pregnancy and terminate that child? It's a fascinating subject. It doesn't feel like it's around the corner, but in, you know, maybe by the time I'm shuffling off my mortal coil, it might be around. Uh, on that cheery note, Madeline, thanks very much indeed for coming in.